Now, removing plates, <laughs> you have to do it very carefully. Usually you have both hands, and you're not just pulling away, but you're also pulling out a little bit. And then it depends all on the width and all that. The bottom line is you have to be very careful. You want to peel it, it naturally becomes 90 degrees. So now you're peeling the tape away, the, the plate away, rather. Here's a hunk of tape, a plate is on there. It does not go like that. As we're pulling it, it actually kind of does that. So we're pulling it, and we have to observe this area here that we're not introducing uh, wrinkles into the surface of the plate and that sort of thing. We have to be very careful. Okay? But what we can't do is try to peel it that way, which, which I know it seems obvious. It's obvious. So you know that. I shared with you that zigzag pattern. Reuse of tape. Um, I'm not a proponent of it, but I have a luxury. I live in the United States. Right? You folks, everything is expensive for you, I'm pretty sure. You know what? It's worse in Europe right than here. You already have folks setting up shop here and catering to you. But still, uh, I'm sure there's people in here reuse mounting tape. I'm sure there's at least one of you in here that uses mounting tape. And what happens is we take the plate off. Looks good to me. We put another plate on there. You can get away with that many times where I do not recommend that. And, and I don't do it at all. I never reuse tape. But I'm not saying you should not. Okay, you have to factor it in. So what I want to share with you is things you can do to when when you do that and to do that. Now so while tape is expensive, so is the temp potential influence of worn tape. That's why I don't reuse it. I don't want to discover that the mounting tape under the plate I just mounted is put on the press and now I have to remount it and the machine is down. Machine down, money lost. You do not stay flat. You make money, you lose money, period. So when that machine's not running, you are losing money. So, however, if, if you have simple things you're doing, you're not doing half tones and all that, by all means, and I'm, I'm sure some of you are doing it there, reuse that tape, but learn to discern reusable tape from non-reusable tape. Number one, uh, you know, the operator is uh, probably one of the better judges of that, but he's not always the one or she that is removing. But whoever dis discovers that the, the, the mounting tape is not used, it, remove it immediately. Immediately. Don't set it aside because now the next time we look at it, somebody's going to look at it and say, can I use it? Or we might get to reintroduce that back into the workflow. Okay? If you keep that cylinder or sleeve mounted, protect it from dust. Now, we're talking about the tape, not the plate, I'm sorry, not mounted, but we're leaving the mounting tape on there. And we remove the plate. We've looked at it, we've decided, I can use that again. If we do that, let's protect it uh, from, uh, from dust. And you can use silicone release liner for that, that, that the very mounting tape is a little bit challenging sometimes because you don't always have available the material covered, but do all you can to protect it from dust. <coughs> now, whoops. Again, with the ink, with the plates, with the tape, I want to have a good relationship with my suppliers, with my vendors. Okay. Uh, in the selection of tape and that sort of thing, there is no substitute for press trials. Though you could have the nicest 
chart, a specification chart, you can get the most sincere advice from people, all of these things. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to run optimization trials to determine what is the best mind tape for me to use under certain conditions. And we're not going to talk about optimizing that, though in a, in a future program, we are going to do optimization through the workflow of plates, tape, ink, analogs. We're going to do all of these things, okay? But they're all done with intelligently designed, uh, well-planned, well-executed trials. You want to involve your supplier in the press trials. They bring valuable <coughs> knowledge and insights. Uh, they can respond. They see firsthand the situation. Uh, when possible, you'd like to involve them. And be advised that all of those properties that I told you about, while there are portfolios of, uh, of different tapes of different constructions available, uh, you can talk to your vendor about possibly custom formulating, formula, formulating or designing mounting tape for you. I'm sure there are considerations like consumption and all that, but they can sometimes tailor tapes to your specific uh, requirements. Now, I use that purpose. Stick to it. Okay? You must document the tape you use for each printed product and adhere to the documented specification. When you go through your process of optimization and all of that, you will arrive at it and say, okay, we ran this job and we decided that. And we used this tape and this plate and this analogs at this speed at this temperature with this coating and this substrate and not all of these things. All of that becomes documented and associated with that particular SKU or product. So once you've done that, you can't just say, Okay, today I'm going to use this tape, tomorrow I'm going to use that tape. It's just like anything else, we must stick to these things, okay? So, however, having said that, uh, change can happen. Just like we spoke about before, you need a protocol, okay? If you, uh, I'll give you an example. I was a supervisor and uh, we were having issues. We changed mounting tapes for resiliency reasons, but they, uh, for adhesive reasons. We were having a serious issue with plate lift and lifting off the cylinder and all of this stuff. It turned out that we could not make, keep that foam but, and at the same time get uh, adhesive properties we like. We had, had to end up with another mounting tape altogether. So as a consequence, as the work started to come back through the, through the process, we discovered that, oh, look, we're having plate mounts. Oh, look, we're, not, we're having pinholing. In other words, we're having problems that are a result of this new cushion, this new resiliency, and this new derama. And so we're re-optimizing on the fly. So I gave my operator's license. And I said, okay, if you discover that you want to go to a softer or harder tape of this new brand now on that previously, as these jobs went through and as I permitted my operators to, uh, to make the, ch the change they suggested, if we then proved by running it that it worked, I now sign, change the, uh, the work order with the specifications uh, that specify the mounting tape used with each cylinder, by the way. If cylinder number five, because it had that big bar, we had to go to a softer tape, I signed it, dated it, took a photocopy of it, put the 
uh, the photocopy uh, of it into, uh, or allowed, it, the, allowed the original to flow back to the system, and the protocol for customer service and production control is, as those documents came back through, they would check for any changes that were authorized. And if they found that the tape condition changed, they would go into the system that outputs that work order, make the change because I authorized it, and when that work order, and then they would uh, uh, reprint a copy for me and send it to me as a person that sent them, and then I confirmed that they made the change, and then I threw away the copy. So it's okay to change even when you establish certain things, as long as you follow protocol and control that change. Thank you. How are we doing on time?